from being a great songwriter, uh, definitely like to take poetic license, literary license. So you're going to hear some lies in this next verse. <laughs> Just ignore it. Don't go back there looking for this stuff at the break. The music starts early. Fresh brewed cappuccino <laughs> and cafe au lait. Good friends and good times at That's the Camarillo Cafe. Here we go. Camarillo Cafe. That's been keeping your heart 
locked up so tight. When love comes knocking in the morning, when love comes knocking in the morning, you better be there rocking when love comes knocking. And then we'd have one really dreadful weekend. <laughs> And during that weekend, we would lose our hair, our teeth would fall out, we would lose our eyesight, we would lose our sex drive, and we would shrivel up like cheap bacon and die. In one weekend, at the end, vote for me. <laughs> no, I love that song. Oh, I, you know, uh, I write most of my songs, or I did write most of my songs about women, and uh, in my efforts to get near them. <laughs> but the political climate of the last uh, 20 years has, has, uh, has moved my, the passion of my chakras. Uh, <laughs> now instead of being horny, I'm just enraged. <laughs> and here's a, here's a song that's relatively new. It's a song inspired by people that take religion and, uh, and use it to explain their bigotry and their hate and their intolerance. And they say they're doing it in the name of Jesus. So this is for Kentucky Kim. She couldn't be here this evening, of course. She's out nuking the gay whales for Jesus. <laughs> Some say nothing's bad or good, but thinking makes it so. Some believe in heaven, some say they just don't know. I keep my own counsel, I wish you'd do the same. Cursing me or blessing me, you do it in his name. Yesterday we had the grandest dreams Have they all been laid to rest? Are we gonna disregard the rest? I believe do unto others As you'd have them do for you What else fills with so much grace So simple and so true For the many, not the few. For the many, not the few. Some believe there'll be a rapture, and those with faith will disappear. Could it be it's all mythology, just a prayer? Ease our fears. Is it just a prayer to ease our fears? Do you see them golden slippers? Do you hear that glory train? Do you make your peace right here, right now, with your laughter and your pain? If you're able, if you're king. There's a world in which we struggle 
and all the world we left behind. Yes, there's a world here which we struggle, and all the world. sat down, you know, and put the DVD in, got myself a martini, leaned back, ready to dig myself. <laughs> <laughs> the video comes on, it goes, uh, and now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome James Lee Stanley. Out comes Alfred Hitchcock. <laughs> <laughs> He's got my guitar, you know, the pastor, how is this possible? You know, how could I, how could I get, but, you know, but here's the deal. The, the image that you have of yourself gets fixed, I think, when you're about 14. You, you start realizing that you're no longer your parents' kid. You're also your own person. You've got a world, you've got friends, you've got a life, you know. And, and, and that person is the person that stays fixed in your mind. So I couldn't believe this old brown fat bald guy that came out <laughs> with my shtick. You know, it's just uh, really humbling. I, 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 let's face it, folks. It's just really tragic when food replaces sex in your pants. <laughs> I can't even get into your own pants. You know, I just... Yeah. <laughs> oh, but I'm fun. Oh. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> Giving away the farm, right? You know, that's, that's the thing, you know? I just can't have any kind of filters. You know what? I'll tell you why, too. When I was born, I was the first child of the, of the next generation, you know, in, in our family. And my parents lived with their, my mother's parents and her brothers and sisters and my mother's grandparents. So we had great-grandparents, grandparents, aunts and uncles, my parents, and then me, the first of the next generation. Now, they were all Italian, except for my father, who was alien. And, uh, <laughs> alien. Yeah, and, and so all these Italians around me, there wasn't a moment during the first three years of my life when someone wasn't kissing me. <laughs> <laughs> and, it, and it kind Shut of just it fixed my personality, because I, I just, pretty much wherever I go or whatever, whatever situation I'm in, I just assume that, well, everybody wants to kiss me. <laughs> <laughs> It's like it's in bed, you know. And my grandmother was the was the she was the kissingest grandmother, you know. She was Italian. She was like four feet high, five feet wide, black dress, mustache, you know. Standing there. And, and they, I didn't mention they, they were all from the older country, you know. And not my mother, not my, my aunts and uncles, but my grandparents and my great parents. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I think that's the story short. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, they were from the old country, you know. And my grandmother used to used to grab my cheeks the way Italian women do. You are such a pretty boy. <laughs> <laughs> like that, you know? And kiss me. And, and and you know what? When I when I uh, in the sixties when I when I had I swear I had hair. And, and uh, when I had all this hair and I grew a little little ratty beard, you know. And I was trying to be cool and hip. And and I went to see my grandmother. And she was just aghast. You know? Oh, Jimmy, why you got that hair? <laughs> why you got that beard? I gotta see your face. You're such a pretty boy, I can't see your face. Someday, cut your hair, shave your face, take a peach, sing to me. <laughs> no, I never did. You know, and then they called me and they said, hey, James, if you want to see your grandmother, you better get out here now. So I, I was in San Francisco and I just jumped on a flight to Philadelphia. I, I went right from the airport to uh, Strawbridge and Clothiers, which is an upscale clothing store in Philadelphia. And I bought a three-piece suit and I had them alter it while I went to the barber and had all my hair cut off and I had my beard shaved. So I had like a nice razor cut hairdo and a little mustache and a three-piece suit, you know. I walked into my grandmother's hospital room. She's lying there on her deathbed. I said, she goes, Jimmy, why you got it that you? <laughs> 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 
<laughs> you can't make that stuff up. You know? <laughs> uh, I wrote this song about my family, about my immediate family. I'd like to sing for you all. It's called Here We Have My Father. Here we see my sisters Full of joy and grace can see it in their faces, always have a kind word, always lend a hand. Here we see my sisters, who always understand. Texas place somewhere Gone but not forgotten She's here in every prayer She's the one who gave us She said live it every day
the waiting world The daylight tries to hide Uh, it's actually the first time I ever played. I, I got a, a deal with Wooden Nickel Records, part of RCA, and they sent me to Chicago to play the Earl of Old Town. And, uh, and I met uh, this Steve Goodman there. Right. Steve was a wonderful guitar player, songwriter, singer, and a remarkable entertainer, just a quadruple threat, fabulous. And, uh, and he came to see me play, and then, and then a couple nights later, because I was playing there for two weeks, and, and the place was continuous folkorama, 9.30 to 4.30 in the morning. And then on the weekends, they would go late. <laughs> yeah. It was like a real job. It was awful. You know? <laughs> and, uh, so anyhow, I'm playing my last set you know, on this Thursday or Friday night, I don't know. And in comes Goodman, and he's got uh, Jimmy Buffett in tow. Now, at the time, Buffett wasn't famous, Goodman wasn't famous, and I was barely there. You know? so, <laughs> So they sat down and they watched my last set. And afterwards, I went over there and sat down at the table. And, you know, we're talking and drinking. And, uh, and Buffett says, you know, Stanley, they don't want to hear those sensitive songs you're writing, man. They, uh, he said, I've got a song that's on every jukebox in the South right now. It's making me famous. It's going to make me rich. I said, wow, it's fantastic. What song is it? He said, why don't we get drunk and screw? <laughs> and I said, gee, I... You know, I don't even want to write that song. It doesn't, it doesn't you know, I, I, I don't think so. So we kept talking, and, and then time passed, you know. It's 20 some years later. I'm in Beverly Hills. I'm, I'm in line to get into Bretano's bookstore. I'm two blocks away in line to get into Bretano's bookstore get my copy of A Pirate, a pirate Looks at 50, signed by one Jimmy Buffett, who flew there in his own plane from Key West, where he keeps his yacht. And I thought to myself, you know, perhaps I, I didn't think this through. I have to write a song that uh, that reaches the lower chakra. <laughs> so I wrote this tune, and I, I first debuted it at Russ and Julie's, and the audience started singing right away, as if they already knew the tune. So I'm hoping that will happen to you. But I will tell you, here's the lyrics. It's pretty simple. The more I drink, the more I drink, the less I think, the less I think, the less I think, the less I think. The better I feel. The better I feel. The better I feel. The better I feel. The, I feel. the, more, I drink. the more I drink. I got a system and it works for me. I got a system and it works for me. Okay. <laughs> the more I drink, the less I think. The less I think, the better I feel. Didn't need that house either. Well, it was the best. 
wrecks, not mine. Now I'm trying to spend with my new best friend. And you know what we're doing. Everybody, the more I think, the less I think, the less I think. It was her idea. We're better off now. For both of us. Freedom. I love that rhyme. Idea. Freedom. <laughs> now we're time to spend with my new best friend. Hey, have you met Harvey Wallbanger? Hey, Harvey, come out and take it out. the Supreme Court and the Koch brothers too. We don't have to worry about what our government might do. They just go their own way and we've got no say. It's the best Congress money can buy. <laughs> Is it any wonder? The more I think, the less I think, the less I think, the better I precious thing that you can give anyone. And the fact that you chose to give some up to us is, is a, an honor and a privilege and it's humbling. And so I just want to say thank you and, and show you the CDs. <laughs> <laughs> so here's a tune I wrote for uh, uh, my, my third wife came home from, from, uh, from two hours of driving from uh, Torrance to Woodland Hills. <coughs> She was crazed and, and just ragged and enraged and just hated the world and the trapping her. And she was out of her mind and she said, I can't stand it. I can't let's just get out of here. And I was working on this tune and I said, What did you say? She said, I said, Let's get out of here. And I said, Gee, that's, I mean, I appreciate how much angst you're going to do right now. That's a fabulous idea for a song. So just hold on to that angst. Let me write this down and I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. <laughs> So this is a tune my, my third wife never got to hear. Before she left. So this is called Let's Get Out of Here. Let's get out. It would be so fine to leave it all behind. Let's just get out of here. We'll make a get away. Why should we wait another day? Yes, the time is right. I see we go tonight. Let's just get out. Take a car, take a cave, a motor, take a plane. Let's just get out of here. Take a car, 
take a train, take a motor, take a plane. Let's just get out of here. Camarillo Cafe.